Good morning, great day, Greater Bethlehem and friends. Thank you for tuning in. Whether you be on your iPad, your phone, or your computer, thank you for turning in to worship and praise the Lord with us. Right now, we have something very special, a very special guest that's going to come up and help us do our first number. Give him a round of applause.
worship you enough for being so good. And you know what the highest form of worship that we can give you is to say hallelujah. You know, you deserve it, and our hallelujah belongs to you, God. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Praise his name. Wherever you are, just get God on your mind. Just get your blessings on your mind. He's faithful, and he's been there for us. Even through this, don't get discouraged. Just praise your way out of whatever that situation is. And remember, my hallelujah belongs to you.
going to close our praise and worship with this old little simple hymn. It simply says, Great is thy faithfulness. Psalm 95 reads, O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it and his hands formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Yes, yes, yes. Great is his faithfulness. Listen, we want to welcome you again one more time. Thank you for tuning in. We know that there are tons of streaming going around, and you guys have options, and you can pick and choose where you want to worship on Sunday mornings, but we are grateful that you stopped by just for a little while to connect with us. Thank you so much. Uh, if at any time you want to link with us, you need prayer, you have some questions, whatever the case may be, we want to uh, encourage you to text us, 972-638-9554. One more time, 972-638-9554. Also, don't forget to hit that share button. Hope to see you soon. The way of the world, the familiar, the routine, drifting toward the same ends, heading off in the distance, as if there was no other way. But when you meet Christ, you realize there's a different direction, a guide that invites you on a counter-cultural pilgrimage. You find a sweet harmony in conversation, in step with him. You realize the blessing that it is to be near to him. He asks you to drop everything, 
to follow the path toward him. And while the walk is certainly not without its challenges, you are not left unattended. But it's easy to lose focus. It may not be intentional, but if you're not disciplined to move, the gap can widen and you'll become used to your callousness. He desires to have you close and you remember how pleasing it is. But the affairs of the world can become rather overwhelming. And there are times when you feel trapped, times when you get preoccupied, distracted, pushed, pulled, bogged down. And you realize the instant that you're not actively moving toward him, you're moving away from him. Remember who called you to this journey and run to him. Welcome GBBC family and friends to the time of the word. We praise God for our praise and worship team and for everyone that's behind the scenes. Y'all, we have a crew here and I really want you to pray for them and just lift them up before the Lord because uh, they do it in their own time, their own expense. And so we're grateful for these men and women who serve so faithfully. Now it's time for the word. We just finished our Family Matters series. Wow. I pray that was a blessing to you. We're going to make sure we get those up to our audio podcast this week. And we got a lot of sermons. We got to reload into the audio podcast. But listen, Corona hit and a whole lot of stuff kind of came unhinged. But we're going to get back to our audio podcast as well. Thank you. For those of you who joined me on Wednesday night for Pastor Brown going live, that was my first time just doing a straight up live Bible study. I sometimes pre-record those, but hey, we're going to go live going forward and praise God for your presence with me on this past Wednesday. Now. Let's get into the Word. This is a standalone sermon. We're preparing for another series coming up beginning next week as we head towards Pentecost. But this is a standalone sermon. The Lord led me here to Psalm 1. Find Psalm 1. And as you find Psalm 1, I want you to look at your screen closely. We're going to see if I can get somebody to zoom in. Y'all, uh, life is changing. It's, it's filled with swift transitions. Y'all, look at your pastor. Help me, Lord Jesus. Oh my God, I got glasses on, y'all. These are, these are just readers. These are because I, I can't see the camera, but, but uh, I can see my scriptures in front of me. Amen, somebody. So Psalm 1, those that found Psalm 1, say amen. I hear you. I hear you. You can type amen in the comments. Here is the word of the Lord. I'm fogging up, y'all, but I got to love it. It says, how happy is the one who does not walk in the advice of the wicked or stand in the pathway with sinners or sit in the company of mockers. Instead, his delight is in the Lord's instruction, and he meditates on it day and night. He is like a tree planted beside flowing streams that bears its fruit in its season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. The wicked are not like this. Instead, they are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to ruin. I've wanted to do that for like 25, 30 years. Take my glasses off after I've read the scripture. Amen. <laughs> Y'all better laugh with your pastor. Amen. Today we're going to talk from the subject, Back to Basics. Back to to basics right where you are bow your heads and close your eyes father in the name of Jesus we we come to you at this preaching moment asking father God for your spirit your power your wisdom your truth that you'd speak to us right now Lord God allow us to see ourselves as we examine this text allow us father to make some observations and some interpretation but then to walk away with some specific applications for our lives Father, we are grateful for the season you have us in because you've taught us in your word, specifically James, to rejoice in the midst of all types of trials. Father, this is an unusual trial that we've been in, sheltered in place. 
cut off from each other physically, but not emotionally and spiritually, even digitally. Cut off, Father God, many of us from work and bringing in income. Cut off from the day-to-day -day routines that we're so accustomed to, both adult and child. So, Father, in this season, we're giving you thanks. We're trusting you. We're loving you. In Christ's name, we lift all of this up to you now. Amen. Amen. Give God a little praise right where you are. Right where you are. Amen. Here is, here is the big idea for today's message. The happy life awaits you. The happy life awaits you. During this season of homeschooling, I have found myself doing a lot of schoolwork, both instruction and guidance and supervision. Well, the other day I helped Simone with a specific assignment on hibernation. Yeah, first graders are studying hibernation. And, and in, I, in, in my studying with Simone, I discovered that hibernation is the state of inactivity. I need you to catch that. It, it refers to a season in a certain animal's life, which is characterized by low body temperature, slow breathing, and slow heart rate, and a low metabolic rate. So these animals allow themselves to be placed in a confined space for the purpose of renewing their strength. I'm preaching already, y'all. So, so after the season of hibernation has concluded, these animals come out of hiding stronger, better, leaner, watch this, meaner. See, they self-isolate so that they can live better animal lives. Oh, beloved, that's, that's what we're dealing with right now. And so I'm here to ask you the question, as you have been self-isolating, what will you look like when you finally come out? Oh, I need a witness up in here. What, what will you look like? Now, I'm not talking about projects around the house. I'm, I'm not talking about the fact that you're cooking more and spending less, but I'm speaking specifically to your spiritual life. What will your spiritual life look like once you come out of hibernation? See, as we hibernate, we ought to use this time to draw nearer, to, to get better, and to get back to the basics of the faith. See, what I don't want you to do, beloved, is to reflect on this season and just see one extended Netflix binge. Use this time, whatever you have remaining, to be used so that you can ensure that you're living the blessed life, so that you are living the happy life. So Psalm 1 is one that presents a choice. It's, there's a choice presented in Psalm number 1, righteous living versus wicked living. Now, I got to talk about it because the text talks about it. See, if, if, if this shelter in place has done nothing, it has slowed every one of us down, allowed us to not only self-quarantine, but more importantly, to self-examine. Beloved, this is where the rubber meets the road. You have a choice to edit your life experience so that you can embrace happy living. Y'all, we got to get back to the basis. We've got to get back, back to the basis. The text says, how happy is the one who does not walk in the advice of the wicked or stand in the pathway with sinners, nor sit in the company of mockers. This psalmist comes right out of the blocks by telling us what happy living must avoid. Here it is. Happy living must avoid, watch this, bad company. Oh, avoid, avoid bad company. I've, I've taught you before about this text and the progression of this text. Walking leads to standing, which leads to sitting. Oh, I like that by myself. Watch this, y'all. The more attention you give to bad company, the more at home you will feel with bad company. Oh, God, let me say that again. The more attention you give to bad company, the more at home you will feel with bad company. So when we 
follow the advice of the wicked. Y'all, we end up living and looking like the wicked. What makes wicked, wicked, wicked folks live as if there is no God? Oh, beloved, and I don't ever want you to, to have that on your shoulders, so I really want you to use this time now, this shelter in place, for you to get back to the basics. Oh, avoid, avoid, avoid bad Come see somebody here, you're watching, you're listening, and that's your foundational step. That's where you have to begin examining the very ones who you keep company with or the ones who keep your company. I like that. Let me give you a testimony. See, uh, I used to falsely believe that I could listen to any kind of music and it not affect my behavior. Uh, and that's, that's something I just believe, and I was sadly mistaken because I, I soon discovered that Whenever I was driving and listening to uh, this, this certain kind of music, you know, with, with the parental advisory on the, on the album cover, that's what we used to call it, young people, album cover, CD cover, D, yeah, that's, that's enough, all right. And, and so anyway, I'm listening to this mood music with parental advisory, and I never even realized it, but as I'm listening, my foot began to get heavier on the gas. I began to drive faster and faster and faster. And y'all, that's just an illustration that I discovered that unconsciously what I was listening to began to affect how I lived. Oh God, this, this is what bad company will do to us, beloved. Where we'll find our lives at a certain pace and place. And as a consequence, we'll find ourselves in unsafe territory. Why? Because the ones keeping our company are wicked. Tom Constable puts it this way. He says uh, in this text, they proceed from being casually influenced by the ungodly to cooperating with them in their wickedness. Oh, God, listen. He, he said it, it, it starts out as a casual influence. But by the time it's all said and done, you are cooperating in the wickedness. Y'all, that's that gang mentality that I'm, I'm so familiar with. So, beloved, as we get back to the basics, our first step is to avoid bad company, not just in person, but also media-driven bad company. The other day, the other day out of boredom, I, I forced myself to watch a simply horrible movie. Y'all, it, it was just horrible, not, not, not just for its poor cinematic quality, but poor because of its poor cinematic content. And I sat and made myself watch this horrible movie. So I'm going to say it. There are some themes, images, and content that you should have spiritually outgrown. I know, I said it. I know, you get mad at me all you want to. Just type it in the comments. I can take it. But there are some stuff, beloved, spiritually speaking, that you ought have outgrown. Uh, somebody say avoid bad company, avoid, avoid, avoid bad company. But the text is moving. I ain't going to hold you long. The text, the text is moving. He says in verse 2, instead, rather than that, instead, his delight is in the Lord's instruction. And he meditates on it day and night. He is like a tree planted beside flowing streams that bears its fruit in its season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Allow God's word to delight you. Oh, I like that, beloved. Allow, allow God's word to delight you. Avoid bad company. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then secondly, allow God's word to delight you. The psalmist is speaking to where we gain our insight for living. Will we get it from a worldly, wicked perspective? Or will we get it from a godly, biblical perspective? See, the happy person is delighted in God's word. 
is influenced by God's word, is guided even by God's word. I learned this term some years ago through Pastor Sonja's time with Scripture Union. Here is the term, y'all, Bible engagement. Oh, God, let, 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 let me say this. There is not one issue that we face that Scripture does not address. Oh, I need a witness up in here. And, and, and you got to understand and begin to value God's Word in your life. Hebrews, the fourth chapter, let me call the roll, says, For the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing the division of soul and spirit and of joints and of marrow and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Matthew 4 and 4 says this, but he answered, that's Jesus, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. I've got two more. Second Timothy chapter 3, 16 says, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof proof for correction and for training in righteousness and then Ephesians the sixth chapter verse 17 puts it this way and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the very word of God oh, I'm here to tell you beloved there is not an issue that we face that scripture does not address the text says oh help me Holy Spirit instead his delight is in the Lord's instruction, and he meditates on it day and night. The root of the happiness in verse 1 is revealed in verse 2. His or her delight is in the Lord's instruction. The more word we get, the more word we'll want. Oh, let me say that one more time. The more word we get, the more word we'll want. So if we desire the harvest of righteousness, we must plant the seeds of instruction. Oh, God, I'm feeling this, y'all. So verse 2 offers us a stark contrast to engaging bad company, which is Bible engagement. Verse 1 shows us the progression of wickedness, and verse 3 shows us the progression of righteousness. Oh, but how do we get there, Pastor Brown? How, how do I get to this point where I'm really allowing God's word to be a guide to my life? Here it is, y'all. It begins by, first of all, being taught. Oh, look at your neighbor and say, being taught. Listen, the, the text is clear. The text talks about that, that you are, are, are embracing the instruction of the Lord. And so that's why we're grateful to have sound, strong, biblical teachers at Greater Bethlehem. You got to be willing to be taught. But see, some of us stop there. Oh, God, we get the word. We get fat spiritually, but we never do anything with it. Oh, let me keep pressing. Being taught is one thing, but then the second phase is being consistent. Oh, God. In both engaging the word and in living out the word. Being taught. That's so important. Make yourselves available for the instruction of the Lord. But then secondly, being consistent. Engage in the same word. And enacting that in your very life. See, I've discovered that spiritual maturity will never come by accident. It does not happen haphazardly. And coming to or streaming our church services does not make one mature. Being taught in the word of God and being consistent in engaging with what you're being taught. Simply put, you have to apply the word of God to your life. Yeah, you got to apply it. So if the word of God says be holy... You got to be holy. I need a witness up in here. If the word of God says to serve, you got to make yourself available to serve. If the word of God says to be reconciled, you got to say I'm sorry or you got to say I forgive you. You can't just have the word and not apply the word. You cannot reap the dividends as mentioned in this text. He is like a tree planted by streams of flowing water. 
Philip Brooks puts it this way. He said, the Bible is like a telescope. Check this out. The Bible is like a telescope. If a man looks through his telescope, he sees worlds beyond. But if he simply looks at his telescope, he doesn't see anything but a telescope. Oh, God, the same thing with the Bible. He said, the Bible is a thing to be looked through to see that which is beyond. But most of us, we just look at it. Oh, God, looking at the dead words and not seeing through the meaning of the text. Y'all, we have to allow God's word to delight us. Oh, I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward. Verse 3, verse 3. Is that he is like a tree planted beside flowing streams that bears fruit in its season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Oh, let's, 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 let's stack these up. Uh, 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 um, allow, allowing God's word to delight you. Being taught. Being consistent. But then thirdly, being blessed. Oh, God, being. Being blessed. Notice the imagery. Fruit. It's right there in your text. I don't care what, what version you're, you're using. The same word is used, fruit. Fruit. Fruit in biblical imagery is what is visible, what is evidenced to other people. It is not hidden within the person. Oh, so, so the blessings connected to being delighted in God's word involve certain things. Well, I get those. Let, 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 me, let me just pause for just a second because we're talking about fruit. You know one of the key indicators that you have been converted? Fruit. Oh, God. And so you, you're in this shelter in place. What a wonderful time to just spend examining your fruit, examining how you present yourself to others, on your job, to your family, in your neighborhood. Examine your own fruit. But then humble yourselves and ask somebody to examine your fruit. Ask people, what do you see in me? How do you see me walking out my faith day to day? So the blessings connected to being delighted in God's word involve a few things right here in the text. Number one, there is a harvest, and that harvest takes place at the proper time. Let, let me cut across Phil because I don't want to hold you long, but let me tell you something. There is a harvest that we can look forward to that is directly connected to the seeds of instruction that we're planting. A harvest, y'all, I want you to get your minds off the temporal and begin to think eternal. See, I, I, I want the things that I can't get on my own. That's the things that God can give to us and provide for our very lives. A harvest, but not only a harvest at the proper time. Secondly, healthy living. Healthy, healthy living. He said, whose leaf does not Wither, healthy living. That is both internally and externally, spiritually and physically. Leaf doesn't wither. Now, y'all have heard me say this many times. It is, it is disheartening to have somebody that's 60 that looks 90. Yeah, I said it. It's, it's disheartening to have somebody that's 16 that looks 36. And y'all, essentially what begins to happen is this, y'all. We're not, we're not sowing seeds of instruction so we cannot look forward to healthy living. Being taught involves being consistent and being blessed. There's a harvest at the proper time. There's healthy living. But then thirdly, supernatural success. See, whenever we hear about prosperity, we start thinking about that bank account. We start thinking about the car I'm going to drive, uh, the clothes I'm going to get, uh, the house I'm going to buy, uh, the red bottom shoes I'm going to get. Y'all, we got to think beyond the temporal. There is no direct connection that we can draw from this text that there is a promise of wealth. But there is a promise of supernatural success. Generational blessings pronounced upon your children that they've covered and, and that your children's children have a faith that they can inherit like Timothy. Not only his mother, but his grandmother. Those are supernatural successes that we can look forward to. So this is prosperity from God's perspective. Now let's keep it real. Now when you live a life that honors God and glorifies God, you invest in God's kingdom, you can look forward to some dividends. But I don't want you to shortchange what God is doing. 
in the long run in your life. Oh, God, I'm finished. Avoid bad company. 23 minutes. Avoid bad company. Secondly, allow God's word to delight you. Finally, verse 4, he says, the wicked are not like this. Another contrast. Instead, they are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand up in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to ruin. Let's deal with the the consequences from verse 1 first, because they're given right here in verses 4 and 5. The wicked will not end well. And he lays it out. They're going to be like chaff, blown away. They're not going to be able to stand in the judgment. They're not going to be able to gather in the assembly of the righteous. And then he ends it by saying the way of the wicked is already known because it leads to ruin. Y'all, I, I, I know the wicked look cool. I get it. I'm not even sure if we say cool anymore. Uh, but, but, but the way of the wicked seems attractive. But I'm here to tell you, those that believe there is no God, they are not to be emulated or followed. And y'all, we got to turn this uh, toward the people who are really worthy of being followed. Those men and women of our faith who have gone before us and some still stand with us right now. These are the ones to be emulated. No, they are not perfect, but they're striving for protection. So the consequences from verse 1 revealed in verses 4 and 5. Here's our final point, and we're, we're wrapping this up. We can look forward to experiencing God's presence and his protection. Avoid bad company. Allow God's word to delight you. But then thirdly, experience God's presence and protection. The text says the Lord watches over the way. The very presence of the Lord watches your coming and your going. The very presence of the Lord is faithful and present in the lives of his children. You are not alone in this, beloved. You are not by yourself. God is a very present help. And his presence makes all the difference in the world. But not just his presence, his protection. The Lord has a way of looking out for you. Have you ever looked back over your life? Oh, God. And at some point, the Lord had stepped in without your knowledge and helped you to avoid what could have been the worst mistake of your life. Do I have a witness up in here? That is both his presence and his protection. And child of God, you got to know and believe that God has got your back. You got to know and believe that God is looking out for you. You got to know and believe that he is looking out for your way, says the text. I'm finished, I'm finished, but the most accurately depicted Uh, presence and protection of God is found in Psalm 23. Y'all remember Psalm 23, amen? That's that's like uh, the Psalm of Psalms, amen? And I like the old King James Version. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint me. My head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Y'all, let me tell you something. The presence and protection of the Lord are real, and we access those as we develop our relationship with him through his word. So let's get back to the basics, y'all. I'm done. I'm done. Let's get back to the basics. I almost went Baptist on y'all. Let's get back to the basics. And let me pray for you that you are intentional about your time during the season. I know you've had a month and a half or so off and you haven't done much with it. I'm kind of there with you too. But y'all, let's take advantage of the time that yet remains. 
let's do some examinations and let's see if we got some, some bad company that we, that we need to, to distance ourselves from. Let's allow God's word to be our delight. And then here is the, here is the most wonderful one. Let's experience God's presence and protection over our lives, over our children, over our homes, over our communities. Y'all, the world is getting more wild every day. We need his presence and his protection. Let me just pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pause now. Thanking you again for your word. Thank you, Lord, just for your goodness toward us. Father, you always have a way of just showing up right on time. And we are grateful. Father, we confess that we've not used our time as wisely as we should during this shelter in place, this self-quarantine. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask right now that you'd help us to draw nearer unto you. As we get back to the basics, may we reprioritize your word in our lives. May we reprioritize our daily devotion. Father, may we reprioritize this quote-unquote free time that we have. Help us, Lord, to get back in alignment with your will for our lives. Being taught the word of God. Being consistent with the word of God. And being blessed as a result of our Bible engagement. Lord, don't let us come out of shelter in place looking worse than we went in. Help us to be like those animals in hibernation. Help us to shed a little. Help us to be strengthened in some other areas. And help us to come out with our leaves not withering. We thank you, we glorify you, and we bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, give God a little praise right where you are. Come on, right where you are. Come on, put a hallelujah. Put a hallelujah in your chat box. Come on, put a hallelujah in there. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And we're going to follow up on Wednesday with some specific things that we're going to do uh, as a church and a faith community. You're more than welcome, even if you're not a member of our church, to join us on Wednesday night. I'm going live, live again, y'all. Live, live. Amen. Well, listen, uh, I want to just take a moment here. I want to be sensitive to your time, but I want to just take a moment. And I want to invite you to experience new life. I want to invite you to experience life eternal and life abundant. We learned that the Lord Jesus Christ came to earth for the sole purpose of being a sacrifice. Yes, he came to perform phenomenal miracles, which he did. He lived the perfect life because he's both God and man. His ultimate fulfillment, though, was to be a sacrifice. So, y'all, we had a sin debt that had to be paid. And there's nothing we can do to bridge that gap. We used to try sacrificing animals and, and all types of things and doing all types of rituals. But Jesus has come and his death has paid the price for all of that. So he came from heaven to earth for the purpose of being born to die. He was falsely accused and he was crucified. He was killed. And that death that shed blood on that cross of Calvary, it paid the price. And so with resurrection power, he makes available for us to receive this gift, this payment that we do not deserve. It's simple prayer or just an attitude of your heart declaring, Lord Jesus, I need you. I thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. I open the door of my heart and I receive you as my Savior and Lord. Please, Lord, come into my life and make me the kind of person you want me to be. According to your word, I am saved in the name of Jesus. Now, if that speaks anywhere near to where you are, in your own words, just, just speak to the Lord even now. 
what I really want you to do is to follow up with us. Allow us to serve you. There's a number right there on the screen. Text your name and whatever you're dealing with to that number. And just allow us to serve you. We would love to invite you to become a part of our faith community, Greater Bethlehem Baptist Church. We're located in East Dallas. We'd love to have you. And we'd love to walk with you in this faith journey. Amen. Amen. All right, one more hand of praise. Come on, praise God, beloved, right there. Put a hand clap in your chat feed. Come on, come on, come on. Because guess what? It's time for the offering. Yay! It's time for the offering. Four ways to give. Find the way that's best for you. Greater Bethlehem, let me tell you, we appreciate your sacrifices during this season. I know money is funny and change is strange. I get it. So everything that we do during this season is a sacrifice. But we already know that whatever we have, God gave it to us. So it is our honor and privilege to give back to him. So let's prepare to give. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give. May we give with cheer and joy, not with complaints. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. One more time, it's time for the offering. Yay! Now to our weekly announcements. Great day, GBBC. You are listening to The Greater Way, and here are your announcements. GBBC ambassadors, please stay diligent in sharing information and checking on others, especially our Silver Stars. Continue to submit farm stand pre-orders. The order form is available through the weekly email newsletter. The order deadline is Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Please share this information with others and text 214-240-8423 for more information. Stay connected. Text 972-638-9554. Email info at greaterdallas.org. Or you can call 214-388-7979. Remember, we are here for you. GBBC family, remember to subscribe, like, and share our YouTube channel. Greater Dallas. There is content for all ages. Join us live on Sundays at 10:15 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7:15 p.m. You can also connect through Greater Dallas Facebook Live or call 972-486-9929. Join the live weekly check-ins Tuesdays and Thursdays at 12:15 p.m. And the prayer call, Wednesdays at 6.30 a.m. Dial 319-527-4229. Log in Thursdays at 7 p.m. for the Zoom video conference. Please see the email newsletter or Greater Dallas Facebook group for invite information. Please check the website, emails, and Facebook group for updates and additional information. And we would also like to wish all members born in the mighty month of May a very, very happy birthday to you. You stay safe out there and corona-free. Have yourself a phenomenally blessed week. And you have been listening to The Greater Way. Woo! Praise God for your giving. Praise God for your giving now. We're getting ready to go, yeah. We're getting ready to go. Don't forget, I want to see you this Wednesday. I want to see you this Wednesday. Uh, GBBC, let me share a few things with you. We have some, some members who are going through seasons right now. Check your email blasts for those names for prayer. Uh, we're trying to do some special things uh, just during this season. Please check your email blast. Uh, we're going to have some services coming up. We're going to stream uh, those homegoing services. And so just check your email blast for those. We want to be sensitive to the family. And we're going to be sure to be in prayer. We want to be in prayer. Uh, the Blackman and the Bell family, just keep praying for them during the season and ask the Lord to do whatever the Lord is going to do. We trust him. His will is perfect. Amen. His will is perfect. So I want to see you all this week. Now let, let's talk a bit, bit y'all. Our Tuesdays and Thursdays call in, getting a little slim, getting a little slim. And so if they keep getting slim, we're going to go down to one call a week. Amen. So we'll make that decision this week. But I, I'd love to connect with you. Everything is in our email blast or on our Facebook group page. So make sure you, you holler at your boy. It's just a time for checking in. And then we even have a Thursday night Zoom call. And that's so important as well so we can see you face to face. Don't forget, I'm going live again this Wednesday. And I was so relieved to know everything 
worked and worked well. Even our audio stream went well. Give God some praise right there. Amen. So we'll be following up with our Back to Basics message from today. We're going to give you more practical steps towards application. Watch this, y'all. I'm about to say the benediction. I'm going to do it with my, my new glasses on. Amen. Amen. Let me put my glasses on real quick. Come on, y'all. You, you, you ain't got nowhere to go. Where you going? You ain't got nowhere to go. Stay right there. Hold on. Hold on. Here we go. Oh, yes. That's it, y'all. I can't see nothing. Praise the Lord. Hope I don't fall off the ledge. All right. Right where you are, bow your heads and let's pray to the Lord. Father, we thank you so much for your goodness. Lord, I'm grateful for these men and women who are here serving and supporting. Grateful for your presence in our lives. Father, as we seek to use our uh, 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 habitation time, uh, hibernation time for your glory, Father, I pray that you would speak to every single one of us. Father, it's not about projects around the house. It's about projects in our heart. So, Father, help us to get back to you, back to your word. Help us to avoid the bad folk, Lord God. And it's not just people, it's media, it's images. Help us, Lord, to allow your word to, to, to just delight us and then to experience both your presence and your protection. We hide these truths deep down in our heart and we say may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of us until we meet again. Let everyone say amen, say glory, say hallelujah, and we'll see you this week. God bless, beloved.